could avoid that hassle and go with U.S. Cellular's home internet. There's no guesswork, and their internet's faster than ever. New plan. Ellen, you sign up for U.S. Cellular home internet. Madison, you bring me snacks while I stream the game. Let's do this. Bundle and save on U.S. Cellular's new and improved home internet. Just $29.99 when bundled with a wireless plan. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. In this new world of having everything delivered to your home or office, why wouldn't you start using Cellular Warehouse for all of your cellular deliveries? Toby Williams and his team are in the business of delivering phones and tablets every day to customers, which enables you to take the hassle out of visiting a store. The best thing about this great service is that it is free. Call Toby Williams today at 252-799-7051 and let his team make your wireless experience fast and easy. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent. Chico's Mexican Restaurant is where the fiesta never ends. Grab your amigos and head to Chico's every Wednesday for shrimp tacos for only $9.99. Plus, Wednesdays means all Mexican imports for just $2.99. Thursdays, enjoy your favorite beef, chicken, or vegetable fajitas for only $9.99. For Mexican food and fun, it's got to be Chico's Mexican Restaurant in downtown Greenville and online at chicosrestaurant.com. Chico's, where the fiesta never ends. There's a common misbelief today that to make it further, you need to push yourself. That you need to give up any joy to continue your rigid routine. Or you could try another way. Take some time to enjoy life. Like having a Michelob Ultra with friends. Because happiness is essential to living an exceptional life. Michelob Ultra. A refreshing and balanced flavor with only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Michelob Ultra. Proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Turkey, ham, bacon, these and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day. But they all leave behind grease when you cook them. And grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Eastern North Carolina's longest-running sports radio call-in show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show on Pirate Radio is brought to you by The Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grading, Greenville Auto World, Papa John's, Greenville Utility Company, Michelob Ultra, The Rick House, Taft Taft and Hagler, and Tiebreakers. And now, here's Brian Bailey. Okay, welcome in on this Monday. We've got lots to do on this Monday. East Carolina defensive coordinator Blake Harrell is going to be live in the studio with us to talk pirate football as we get closer and closer to the spring football game. We're also going to update the standings in the second chance with the Sweet 16 contest. I can tell you that nobody in our contest had UConn, Alabama, NC State, and Purdue in their final four, but we'll update the standings there. We'll also talk about Mustache March and the big shave-off that's coming up later this afternoon with Pirate Baseball. So it's a busy Monday a busy way to start your sports week. Blake Harrell joins us live in the studio after this. The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in Uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. We filled the trucks so you'll save big bucks during the Lazy Boy truckload sale at Bostick Sug Furniture. Look for the Lazy Boy truck in our parking lot. It's filled with Lazy Boy furniture at huge savings. Take advantage of big rig discounts of up to 50% off Lazy Boy recliners and motion sofas. Lazy Boy stationary furniture, leather, sectionals, and chairs. But quantities are limited. There's no reorders, no rain checks. So roll in before these savings roll out during the Lazy Boy truckload sale at Bostick Sug Furniture. North Carolina State 
State Parks invites you to enjoy camping your way. With the weather changing, booking your own cabin is the perfect solution for your camping getaway. Reserve campsites or cabins today at Jones Lake, Goose Creek, and Cliffs of the News. Whether you enjoy traditional camping or air-conditioned cabins that can be rented with Wi-Fi, your next adventure can include hiking, beautiful scenery, and sunsets by the campfire. For information on booking a cabin, visit ncparks.gov. Hey, Pirate Nation, it's Caleb with Strouds Marine. Boating season is here, and at Strouds Marine, we are stocked up with over 20,000 pre-owned parts. We've got everything you need from propellers, lower units, trim units, electrical and fuel parts, and just about anything else you need for an outboard. Speaking of outboards, we will buy your old ones. And as always, our mission is to save you money and get you back out on the water as quickly as possible. Visit StroudsMarine.com today for more information. Strouds Marine, your best source for salvaged outboard parts. Hi, I'm Walker Allen Volova, and I'm with Coffee Pro. Coffee Pro has been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for over 50 years. Coffee Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro, we are the professional office systems people. Hey, Power Nation, be sure to have the best and comfortable shoes with a stop at Fleet Feet. This is ECU alum Chris Lunyon, owner of Fleet Feet of Greenville, and we provide solutions through one-on-one -on -one service to runners, walkers, and everyone in between. Fleet Feet has the tools and technology to get you in the right shoe, including a 3D foot scanner that measures arch height, width, and more. Come visit us at 207 East Arlington Boulevard in the old Gordon's Golf location. Fleet Feet, we run for you. Pirate Radio, no one can outwork us. Like the way you move. We are the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show as we continue on on this Monday. Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator from East Carolina, is in the studio live with us. They had their first scrimmage this past weekend. I've got a hat on that's a little bit different. It's for Mustache March, and we're going to have the great shave-off uh, coming up later on this afternoon. These are available at Bella Madison, a couple of uh, former Pirate baseball players uh hunter allen and parker lamb their wives got together and they came up with this design great design and they're going to do a different design every year uh so we're going to have those they've raised money all the proceeds went to uh, als and uh, that kind of thing so that's going to come up uh, all of your donations i think the pirates were up close to eight thousand dollars trying to get to 15 but there's a lot of checks still coming in uh pirate radio has a check to present to uh, cliff godwin later on today so we'll have all of that uh coming up in just a few minutes i'll be glad to get rid of this this place. you got the whole beer thing going yeah. you like that huh that's the only hair i can grow <laughs> i tell you this this mustache needs some fertilizer or something it didn't come back like it uh, usually does but it's been a lot of fun for a great cause of course als and the walk to defeat als is set for i believe the second weekend in may that's always a good time too so uh, that's coming up later on as we said coach harrell is live in the studio with us uh scrimmage number one in the books what you see out there yeah we, we just finished up uh practice number eight and scrimmage number one and it's the first time the guys are out there you know obviously we, we, we set up situations in practice where they go live and go compete but that was the first time they're out there between the lines by themselves and uh, you saw some really good you know guys getting out there flying around competing and, and doing some really good things and you got some things you got to clean up as always in scrimmage one yeah when you look at the film on that did you have some times where you're like man that was that was not how it was supposed to be <laughs> yeah we, we definitely ain't game day ready i'll tell you that <laughs> but uh you know you definitely see some guys that that flash and do some things that you think you can count on them come fall and on game day so that that's positive you know when you look at this defense and obviously one of the keys to your defense is taking the football away uh takeaways in 29 of your 34 games 11 of the 13 from last year you know how do you build the culture that that's part of your defense that we're going to take the football yeah. away yeah so we talk about defensive culture and talk, talking about playing fast effort base defense playing physical and the last piece of that is turnovers creating more opportunities for our offense and that's just something we talk about in meetings punching at the football club at the football ripping it out you know we go reward guys in, in our meetings just kind of um, trying to promote positive behaviors and do a really really good job of that and guys have bought into that all about the ball 
uh, you know, and, and taking the ball away. So if we can continue to do that and, and give our, our offense more opportunities, it gets us off the off the field and gives us more opportunities to go score. Have you seen teams that, that really buy into that and that, that really, you know, excel at that and then some teams that, that struggle a little bit with that that yeah. you've had in the past? No, no doubt. I think it's more of a mentality. Um, you know, the other thing, when you get the lead on, on certain folks or lead, lead on teams in a game, it puts them behind the sticks. Now they got to put the ball in the air more and take more chances. So you have more opportunities to go get an interception or a, a sack, sack, strip sack and a fumble there. So I think offenses, when they're behind in games, they, they pressure's on them as opposed to when they're leading the game, there's not, you know, they can be more careful. So I think if we can get the lead in some games early and put the pressure on the other offense, I think it increases our opportunities for, for turnovers. You know, one thing that we always talk about is uh, we used to always talk about just Navy, but now you got double trouble with uh, with those two service academies. How early do you start working on some of that stuff? You, every, I think all your installs, as you install defenses and you, you install new pressure, it's got to be built around a who would have the dive, who would have the quarterback, yeah. who would have the pitch. In our offense, it's some similar ways. It's the pitch it just happens to be the, the bubble or the hitch out wide. So uh, you can always make sure you're, you're talking to those things. But yeah, and you know, you, you look back that you guys have had a lot of success, you know, on defense you know, with those type of offenses. I mean, we went through a spell at East Carolina where, you know, I always joke that Navy just scored again one year. They went to 77, I think. But, but you guys have had success. Yeah, I think, you know, two years ago, uh, I think it was three points through four quarters. I think they end up scoring 17 in regulation there. Uh, last year it was 10 in regulation. Yeah. Uh, you know, obviously as a defense coordinator, you're never satisfied. You <laughs> always want better and not to give up this or that. But uh, we got to keep building on that. And like you said, we got, you know, Army and Navy both that do a really good job with that. And it's going to be tweaked a little bit different from this year. Um, and we, we got to be prepared for that. But, you, you know, the thing about both of those, you know, the service academies being in our conference in the American, I mean, it's just, you know, the the tradition and the things that you see when you go on those road yeah. trips and just uh, just everything about Army and Navy. I had a chance to go to Army years ago, and, man, Mikey Stadium, and just seeing, you know, the, all, all the banks of the Hudson, the Black Knights, and, and that was really a cool trip. And, of course, Navy in Annapolis is always cool. Right. I've, I've never been to West Point, so yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It and just that trip up there not only for the ball game but you know for the experience i think that's the one thing about athletics and football and in particular is you get to experience so many different things right that you wouldn't normally you know it's just an average guy but the, i think it's, it's for you know it's been special the color and the pageantry for uh, army and for navy because most of the time and i think i've talked to you about this before like when you guys go on the road and we see you on the road you know we get a chance to branch out and go do some things yeah. for the most part you guys are in meetings so you don't know if you're in san antonio texas or denton <laughs> texas or if you're in you know wacomac missouri you, don't, you have no idea because you guys get to the hotel you know you start your meetings you start you know your dinner and, and it's kind of yeah. Pre, pre game it was pretty all, cut and dry. Yeah, pre game it was always the same. Doesn't matter if you're in San Antonio or or West Point or in, in Greenville, it's always the same. And the inside of a hotel is very very familiar as well. But you always get a chance to see everything uh, the next day as you're warming up. And uh, and a lot of times, you know, like when Navy comes out, you know, all the color and pageantry there, you know, they come out. You guys you maybe in the locker room don't get a chance to see that, but it's yeah. uh, it, it's a neat deal. I think Pirate fans really, you know, and, and you know maybe you can't drive to. Army, but you can certainly drive to Navy, and you know it's it's a it's a great trip. And you know if you get a chance to get up to Army, I think that on both of those games. And I had no idea that in the first segment of this show we'd be talking about Army and Navy. <laughs> I just kind of drifted that way on a Monday, trying to get you ready for uh, defense and uh, pirate football. Uh, as far as the spring goes, what has to happen this week to, to get your defense better? Yeah, we got to find a way to, to make improvement from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. You know. Our starters got to start playing like starters. Or the guys that are out there with the ones, uh, that you know they can't have a, a mental lapse or a mental bust, and they got to make sure they're checking us and everything and increasing there and getting better. And and then our, our twos or our threes, they got to keep coming along. Who can we count on? You know, what's our 20 to 25, 30 guys that we can count on that's going to travel with us next next fall that we can count on and go play and make sure they're getting game ready. How does recruiting work this time of the year? Because obviously you're in spring, but you know, are you, yeah. you know, is the portal active? What's happening there? Most of our focus is high school recruiting for mm -hmm. for next year's class. I think uh, Saturday was, was just a visit day. We have kids on campus every day. I think we had about 20 high school kids on campus to watch us practice. You'll have more tomorrow. And, you know, a lot of guys are on spring break this week, different states. 
somewhere last week. So yeah. they, they were coming down their, their spring breaks to watch practice, which is a good opportunity to get to know those young men. Um, the portal opens back up the, mid-April and runs to the end of the month there. So, uh, you know, you're making preparations for that with your own players and, and some needs you might need down the road. And some people have asked me this, and I didn't know how to answer it, but can guys go through the spring and then hop in the portal yeah. in April? Yes. I mean, in- So when that second window opens back up, it's just a opportunity for a student athlete to, to you know, enter the transfer portal. Um, and then it'll close, I think, April 30th. Uh, so then you're good there. I think, obviously, a grad transfer can enter at any time. Uh, so there's some different rules there. Did you ever think when you got into this business that you'd be <laughs> dealing with, with that kind of stuff? Because it, it's almost like the NCAA has put no common sense with, with any of this stuff. And it's just, yeah, we always joke that everything the SMU did to get the death penalty right. is now perfectly right. legal all around. And it changes ever so, you know, it changes every year, it seems like, or yeah. every few months. And, you know, the NCAA is so scared of lawsuits, it seems like that they're just kind of hands off right now. And we kind of, at some point, we got to steer this thing back right. between the lines and, and have some regulations on it. But, um, you know, I think as as coaches and as in athletics, we got to learn how to, to adjust and, and make sure we're doing the best for our program and for Pirate Nation. I've said this a couple of times, but a couple of years ago in December, we, we went to visit with Coach Houston, and I, I, I thought he looked like he'd been up awake for like, you know, maybe 72 straight hours or something. And, and he, he, he was like, I'm trying to recruit kids to come, recruit, <laughs> recruit kids to stay, yeah. you know. But this year when we visited with him, he seemed like, you know, he's gotten more of a handle on it and gotten – and obviously you can see some of the new kids that, that are in the program. And, yeah. uh, and, and obviously you're going to lose some, but, but really – it, it, it's taken a while for everybody to get used to it, hasn't it? Right. Yeah, it, it certainly has. And it's, it certainly just takes a little bit of a adjustment. And, and it is the, the landscape of college athletics. And we got to learn how to adjust. No different than, you know, if we saw a new formation on third down or a new play during the game, we got better adjust to it and get it fixed and be ready to ride the next time we see it. What's your thought process when you do see something new? When you're, when you're, you know, you're in a game and, and they come out in some formation. Yeah. Are you guys on the headset saying, man, I haven't, haven't seen that before. Yeah. What's well, happening there? That's certainly, that's the, you know, the chatter on the headsets goes right to, hey, what was that? Making sure we've identified it properly as coaches. Right. Hey, it may be something we saw three weeks ago from another opponent, or it may be something totally we haven't seen before. And what were they trying to, to, to do? What they're trying to, how they were trying to attack us? And then we got to make sure once we get our our guys on the sideline, we're able to relay that relay that information to them. Um, they're talking about adding the tablets like the NFL has, oh yeah, uh, so, and putting those on the sidelines. And and if that if that comes you know full through you know th- through, then I think that's an easy adjustment defensively. Of hey, here's what you exactly what you saw, right? Because uh, right now you're drawing it on whiteboards, and sometimes guys are like, yeah, that whiteboard's going yeah. good, but it's not moving, right? You know, you see it on the video a little bit, it's a little easier, and then. Your adjustments could, could be even crisper from there. Would the tablets have video, or would they be yeah. still so be video? Yeah. So yeah. what you'll have is a live, you know, um, whatever series. Obviously, you won't be able to use a tablet during the middle of a series. Right. They come to the sideline. You can show them the last series. Yeah. So when you watch the NFL game right now, you, you see the guys with the tablets on the side. They're just watching from the previous. And I, I don't know if theirs are just still pictures. Ours will be live video. Right. When does that come up as far as you know, it, deciding I, on it? Yeah, I think they've they've made it through the first couple of steps. I think the final approval comes in April. Yeah. Don't quote me on that one. Yeah. That would be good. That, yeah, that would be that would be a new process. Because basically, you know, when, when you guys start the week, you know, on defense, you know, you're, you're kind of, you know, you play on Saturday, and as soon as that game's over, you're working toward the next yeah. week, and it's kind of like a chess match. I mean, you, you're working no on getting the pieces all right. Right. And, and there's so many, you know, so many different ways an offense can attack you. You're trying to narrow down for your guys and your players of what exactly to practice and how they're going to attack you and to make it simple for your guys so your guys can go play fast. Right. And that's that's one of the big keys I think I learned early on. The defensive coordinators always say, you know, we don't want to complicate it. We don't want guys out there thinking, like, I need to do this. I should be lined up here. They need to know exactly where they're supposed to be and play fast. We always say, baseball analogy, take away the fastball. Make, yeah. them, make them go to their number two or number three pitch and, and attack you with that. Yeah. Don't let them have their best pitch. So that's that's what we talk to our guys about and our players and, and the staff and trying to establish what that best pitch is. Yeah, and that's that's a, that's a trick too, isn't it? Yeah, sometimes when they got two or three good pitches, then uh, you, you better buckle up. Lots of new coaches on the staff, and and we knew offensively that we were going to have new coaches because you get a new coordinator, and obviously the guys, you know, John David Baker wanted to bring his own guys in. Uh, were you surprised that you've had to make some changes? No, we, we had you know 
anytime I think you have success on, on your side yeah. of the ball, I think and guys get an opportunity to move on, that's kind of a compliment to your program and, and to our players. I mean, Coach Weaver had an t- opportunity to go to be a defensive right. coordinator. Coach Dallas had an opportunity uh, to work in the ACC. So that's a compliment to our players and what they've been able to do and the success they've had. And super excited for those those guys. And, you know, they're like family to us, and they did a great job while they was here. And But super excited about the guys we brought in our right. program as well. Uh, with Coach Magazoo and Coach Zachary, as well as our analysts. Um, you know, so I think really feel good about our defensive staff and, and, and what we got going right now. And, you know, it takes a little extra work. We just spoke off the yeah. air about uh, making sure we're all in, in alignment. You know, I put out a clear vision. Coach Houston has a clear vision. I got to make sure I carry that to the defensive staff with our scheme, with our expectations, with our culture, whatever it may be, to make sure that the product we're putting on the field is aligned with Coach Houston and make sure it gives us a chance to go win games. And really, when you think about it, it, it's when you're more accustomed to the same person, you know their moods, you know this and that, you know, when you have new guys come in. But but if you make the right choices, I mean, Coach Magazoo, Damon is one of the great guys. I mean, I was so, you know, when we first heard that Tripp was leaving, that's the first thing all of us thought of. And rarely do guys like me have an idea that works out. But that one did work out because uh, Damon Magazoo, he cracks me up every time we interview him, we talk about his interception <laughs> in the state game and he's, he's, he's like man just don't talk about that anymore but it, it, it's it's awesome to have him on the staff my, my neighbor's a state fan and he was over last night <laughs> talking about the basketball game so hey by the way remember the game that y'all threw the pick i said that's our, one of our new coaches that's right but yeah coach coach max is, is awesome you know just a pirate through and through and what he means to um the city of greenville in this program and he's carrying that to our players as well. So yeah. just his passion for, for Pirate Nation has been awesome. And just the, the fact, yeah, a, a pirate that, that wants to be a pirate, yeah. wanted to be a pirate, is a pirate for life, and getting the chance to come here, that's right. just got to be you know, mean the world to him. And that's uh, just a, a great situation for everybody involved. And I think he brings a he brings a lot of the Trip Weaver-type enthusiasm to, right. to the field, doesn't that's it? Right. Yeah, you know, I'm getting older, and I can't chase the guys around. So <laughs> it's his job now. But, no, he's, he's just got, you know, some enthusiasm, like you said, and, and doing a really good job job with that room talk about some of the other new coaches on your staff yeah coach coach rico zachary i worked with him before when we were at kennesaw state and he's been running our defense and our scheme uh at, he was a head high school coach he's been in several places been at georgia southern uh but he's been running our scheme and, and using our terminology and verbiage so it's an easy transition wow, for him. yeah um and he coached the de- defensive ends and outside backers for me in kennesaw and you know he's got two kids and, and wife's uh in pt as well so um you know just to have him on staff and familiarity there has been awesome and then um one of our defensive analysts arkita banks came from georgia state he's a north carolina guy uh knows knows the state has a lot of recruiting ties in the state he's been on both sides of the ball coach special teams so just to have him in our room has been special as well and you have a new special teams coach uh, does he work more a little bit with the offense or yeah he, so coach coach andre powell's uh you know i've known coach powell since you know 10 15 years now really um and when i was the special teams coordinator that's who i would go visit with is coach powell and hey how's here's some drills he would give us and some schemes he would give us and just really respected him over the years and the fact that we get the chance to he's down the hall from me now so yeah it's pretty cool um but yeah he, he comes in our room pops in or, or you know gives us hints about hey you know i see what you're doing out there i really like it and here's some tips for you you might be giving away um and some of that's hey we gotta get the the mountains fixed before we get worry about the little bit of hills but um but yeah he's more of an offensive background um, yeah but it's been good to have him around spent nine years at pittsburgh with the panthers in the acc that's right. so that's uh that's big to so that way he comes this way when you got guys going the other way that's so right it's that's kind right. of a um he's a big fisherman too so if anybody's oh well, there you go we're looking to take him fishing i think he's got a, a bass boat he always takes out well when you have a defensive analyst what does that role mean and you've got a couple of grad assistants as well yeah. on defense but what what does the defensive analyst do yeah so uh, we got actually have you know a couple of them that work with us uh Arkita banks and brent thompson okay and, and during like the the off season um they're more hands-on with our players uh when we're gone they, they have an opportunity to kind of visit with our guys our guys might come in for extra meeting they can kind of set them up with film do some th- things like that uh then they kind of pre-scout work ahead um, they, they're not allowed to coach on the field, but there's a lot of things behind the scenes that, that they're taking care of. And, and they both have experience of, you know, 
you know, Coach Thompson's been a head coach. Uh, coach Banks has been a coordinator. So to have that visions and guys that see things differently sometimes in our room has been awesome. So in, in the season, they'll work ahead of some, on some game plans. Um, and then they, they see it, you know, from a different picture too. So it's been good. So when you guys have a staff meeting in season with, with Coach Houston and, and the whole staff, are they involved with that too? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so, so we we'll, we have what twenty some odd, some wow. odd bodies in there. With, it's a bunch. You got recruiting. You got analysts. You got GAs. It, it's a lot. It's yeah, staff. I tell you, I coach uh, Coach Godwin told me he, he said I never thought I would be the, the the chief operating officer, chief financial officer, in the whole thing, and that's pretty much what Coach Houston is. I yeah. mean, when you're trying to get everybody involved, all your assistant coaches, and man, it's a it's a big time undertaking, isn't it? It is. It, it is. is. And I think he does an awesome job of, you know. Giving, putting his vision out there, putting his expect, expectations out there, and then making sure everyone is aligned with him and making sure we're all pulling in the same direction. And you think back to last year, and, and I, I've said this many a time, that the fans get really frustrated and they're, they're calling for this and calling for that. Nobody's more frustrated <laughs> than the, the head coach and the coaching staff when things aren't going well. And your defense had, had a really solid year, but it, it, you don't get judged on defense has a solid year, often struggles. You get judged on the W's and the L's, and that's what it comes down to. It's about one thing. It's about yeah. winning. Yeah. And our, our players invest a lot of time. Our coaches invest a lot of time. And, and like you said, when, when, when we're not successful, we don't put our best performance out there to go win a game. It is frustrating for all of us. It's hard to get home. When you go home and you have those, those beautiful daughters of yours and you go home to the wife. I mean, it, it's got to be difficult when you're frustrated with the, the guys and having a bad season. But but they kind of put it, you know, that w- what they, life's really about, they, don't they? They put it in perspective a lot of times, especially the, the younger two. The older one's getting where she understands wins and losses. Yeah. The, the younger one. She's mad too, huh? Yeah, she's, <laughs> she gets upset. M- Mama gets upset. Mama, Mama's very competitive. But, uh, you know, Mama probably wants to know why you did certain things on certain oh, downs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why, why'd you blitz there? What? Why'd you play that coverage? Or can't you get us, you know, get us a stop there and get off the field? Oh. Uh, but the, the kindergartner, she, she's she's all hugs, so that that brings it back to what's important in life. Well, that's when you go out and get the crayons and get the papers out and do, and do that, and let everybody else go about, yeah. The, yeah. about their business. Blake Harrell live in the studio with us. We'll take another commercial break. Be back with more on the Brian Bailey Show on this Monday. Getting you ready for the spring football game in a couple of weeks. That's coming up after this. This is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports. Highway 11 north of the airport in Greenville. ECU baseball moves up a few spots in the latest D1 baseball poll to number 12 and to number 16 in this week's Baseball America poll after the Diamond Bucks took a series sweep of UAB over the holiday weekend. The Pirates will play 21st ranked NC State on Tuesday in Raleigh at 6 o'clock. East Carolina sophomore Lucas Augustin fired a 9 under par 207 to claim top medalist honors at the 2024 Cutter Creek Intercollegiate, while the Pirates won the team title with a 24 under par tournament score of 840. ECU alum Isaiah Winstead caught a 51 yard touchdown pass for the first touchdown in UFL history on Saturday. He also caught the two point conversion pass for the Arlington Renegades in a 27 to 14 loss to Skip Holtz and the Birmingham Stallions. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. I'm Shirley Rhodes. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. The wait is over. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, is now live in North Carolina. Now you can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in North Carolina with DraftKings. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code PIRATE and bet $5 will receive $250 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings has the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more with fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Get ready for the NCAA tournament with DraftKings. 
DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using the code PIRATE and bet $5 to get $250 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code PIRATE. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and used under license. Turkey, ham, bacon, these and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day, but they all leave behind grease when you cook them, and grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. Pirate Radio. I listen to you guys all the time, especially when it's coming up to game week with the Pirates, and I assure you I'll be listening to Pirate Radio at some point during the fall this year. The voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned, community-powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show. Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator at East Carolina, is live in the studio with us. We're taking your questions or comments on our Facebook Live feed. And one of the questions is asking about the spring game this year. How important is this year's spring game? And is there a little more pop, you think, to come in that spring game? Yeah, I think any time we're out there competing in a live situation, is it's uh, – a, a valuable opportunity for us to get to get better and improve for our young men. I, th- I think for our young guys right now, our, our first, second, and some of, even our third year players, anytime they can get on the grass and play football, it's, it's an opportunity for us to get better. And they're going to get better every, with every rep they see. So spring game is another one of those. But you have all the excitement of a new offense right now. Right. And, you know, our offense is doing some different things that is going to prepare us for, some, for, us for the fall. So I think, um, you know, defensively, just from a uh, defensive coordinator perspective, it's a valuable opportunity. But for our fans, for Pirate Nation, um, for everybody involved, it's, you know, a pretty exciting time. You know, as a defensive coordinator, what have you seen from the new Pirate offense? What are what are some of the differences that, that you've noticed that you can share with, with everybody? You know, the one word I would say is fast. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and fast of the tempo they use, the, the speed we have on offense. Um, and, and what that put the pressure it puts on you defensively is you got to get a call in and you got to get lined up. It, it causes your guys to think fast, you know. And hey, we can't sit there and just analyze everything. We got to get lined up and get ready to play. And, and if we can do that, then we'll have a chance to be successful defensively. So it puts the pressure on us. I think some mistakes we made last last fall were we didn't get lined up to tempo. Right. And this is forcing us to prepare us for that. So. Um, you know, I think that's the one word I would use to describe it right now. You know, when, when you look at tempo and, and, and how fast, you know, things go, I, I mean, I, you look at the sidelines and sometimes you see, you know, guys with these weird signs with all these different pictures on it and everything. Yeah. And then so much we've seen where teams will run up the line of scrimmage and they'll they'll do a fake, you know, yeah. fake, fake sequence. Ready hit, ready hit. And then they stop and everybody looks over the sideline and then the defense is, you know. But but if, if you're going quick, you don't have all that, that time. No, no. And, and I think as a defense coordinator, it forces you just to hey get a call in it may not be your best call but it's a call that you guys can get lined up and execute and get there get 11 sets of cleats in the ground and get ready to play football and somebody else was writing and talked about uh coach hud greg hudson former defensive coordinator and he's been over at, at you guys uh helping you guys out a little bit and he's in town and he's got a, a lot of knowledge of, yeah, of defense I, and power football yeah i enjoy visiting with coach hudson from time to time and he's a wild one now yeah he, <laughs> he, uh, he's got a lot of great stories and we, oh he's got some stories we enjoy catching up and, and just talking ball every now and then yeah i tell you and you can't have too many friends in no football can you no. Oh, and I think that's, you know, we always say oh, iron sharpens iron. And, um, you know, just talking with different folks and, and guys across the country, sometimes you, they may have do, be doing something or have done something in the past that, oh, yeah, that's, we might get it, you know, tweak that a little bit and, and uh, make our football program better, our football team better. You know, we talked about some of the new coaches. Uh, one of the guys I really liked that I've gotten to know a little bit, Roy Tesh. I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he, there's a guy, and, and if he loses any more weight, I mean, he's going to fly away as a kite, isn't he? I mean, he's he's yeah. lost a ton, hasn't he? Yes, yes. He's, Roy's awesome, though. And he's always the same guy, you know, 
play well, play bad. He's always the same guy. Um, but he does a great job with his, with his D tackles, and and he's got some older ones that have been around for a long time. Yeah, playing really well. That's what I was going to ask next. Is that the strength of this defense? Is it on that front line? Because you know, year in and year out, we always talk about that championships are won on the defensive line on the offensive line, yeah. and, and your defensive line looks like it's championship worthy. We, we have a lot of guys back yeah. uh, up front. You know, we obviously lost Jeremy Lewis on the edge there, but. Um, other than that, you, you feel like you're going to have a lot of familiar names up front that have played. Uh, you know, those guys, a lot of them, Elijah Morris, Deontay Johnson, Sue Rad Ware, all came in the same time I did. Yeah. You know, Chad, Chad Stevens actually been around a year before that. So they have experience, they've played. And really excited about that group. You guys came in and uh, COVID hit right after that. I mean, it was, yeah. I mean, that had to be, you know, first of all, you're in a new place and then the COVID hits and then you got all kinds of stuff going on. You got a family, you got nobody going to school and you got, you know, trying to, to work. And, and I remember those days that, that Coach Houston would joke about, you know, the guys would talk about which line to get in to get tested yeah. Yeah. because some of the nurses <laughs> you were, know, spoke too far. <laughs> were really rough <laughs> and they go into your brain, it seemed like. But uh, those days are, are behind us but that was a different deal coming yeah. in wasn't it you know we, we try to create uh, chaos on defense and everything we do but the, <laughs> the pandemic cre- created true chaos oh it was uh, and I, I remember coming out and we would we would do a couple of coaches shows with coach houston and we had to sit like 20 feet apart and we had it i mean it was it, it was just a bizarre time yeah. for the entire nation and i'll never forget just you know just just the lack of having anything to watch that was competitive you yeah. know as a sports fan you don't realize i guess how much you know your life is centered around so although my wife would definitely say that it's definitely centered around sports but there's so much and then you know all of a sudden you're trying to get up at four o'clock in the morning to watch a game from overseas right to, right but uh, and then then the way college football was, they only let a certain number of people in, and the empty crowds. Yeah, and, it wasn't uh, the same. And we talked about Navy, you know, the Navy game when Holden couldn't play, and you know, oh, I mean, that yeah. was <laughs> just. Yeah, that's, I don't think you ever want to start out, you know, in a new place and start a new defense in, during a pandemic. So that'd be my advice. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. right. And hopefully we won't have another one uh, for a long, long time. Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator, uh, our guest live as we get ready for the spring football game, Pirate football. Uh, this time of year usually goes Tuesday, Thursday, scrimmage on Saturday. First scrimmage is in the books. You talked a little bit about it earlier, but uh, are the kids, do they seem like they pretty much know what's going on for the most part? Just yeah. every, just tweaking little things oh, yeah. here and there? Yeah, we're, you know, we got probably 75, 80% of our install in already. Now we just got to go back and fine tune it. And, um, you know, the older guys, if they make a mistake, they, they usually know right away. The younger guys, they, they, hey, they kind of know, but they got to make sure we get them up, uh, caught up to speed. And really right now it's just refining uh, and fine-tuning our skills. When, when you do an install, what all has to happen as far as, as if, if, if today is an install day, how much would you try to get in and what would you take away from a day? Yeah, so I, like tomorrow's practice, we're going to install our man our man stuff, okay. you know whether it's just our base man coverages or our man pressures whatever it may be so we got to talk about how we're going to play stacks how we're going to play bunches how we're going to play the motions hey who who's responsible for the pressure who's going to be the peel guy all those type of things we got to install and then in practice the, the bulk p- part of our calls will be man calls just to make sure hey we're installing it we've walked through it we've talked through it now let's go out and practice it and then we'll come in wednesday watch the film, you know, review it, and then go back at it. So. How long? Because, you know, most of us as fans think about offense and thinking about plays, you know, X fly, 37, yeah. you know, triple, whatever. Yeah. But defensively, it's basically the same thing. You guys are calling a play, and everybody's got to know what their role yeah. is in that play. Yeah. How hard, hard is it to get those guys to understand it in an install? How long does it take? You, you try to, you know, carry over. And it's the same as – what we installed on day one is same as this you know edge pressure is edge pressure angle movement is angle movement hey post is post you know if you're playing post and cover three post and man it's typically a post you know it may have some some little tweaks to it um and then man covers the same way hey in quarters at some point everything becomes man so um you know that's how we kind of start try to already what they know refer back to that and kind of go from there yeah it's a process that's it I mean, as you that's would it. say for sure a process uh we are taking your questions and comments on our facebook live page if you have anything you would like to ask coach blake Harrell, we'll take another commercial break right now we'll come back we'll update our standings in the uh, second chance of the sweet 16 and have more on this monday glad you're starting your sports week with us back with more after this
You know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information. Yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and it applies to you. Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Information provided by Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. This is Jeff Gibson with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! Your first stop for shopping is at Shimmer Boutique. This is Ashley from Shimmer. We are fully stocked with the latest apparel, shoes, and accessories, and more. If you need gift ideas or some shopping therapy for yourself, stop by today. Looking for the hottest shoes on the market? Shimmer has the biggest selection of Hey Dudes anywhere. Shimmer has the newest Yeti products and colors. Want this year's most popular bag? Shimmer has a great selection of all your bog bag needs and accessories. Shimmer in Greenville, Winterville, and Jacksonville. This is your What's New update brought to you by Greenville Auto World. What's new? Greenville Auto World has new owners and is part of the DriveHereNow.com team of dealerships. New owner Tommy Cook and his team have four dealerships with a fully stocked inventory, over 200 SUVs, trucks, cars, and over 50 lenders and has financing for anybody. Get shopping today at DriveHereNow.com. Greenville Auto World, Highway 43 at Bells Fork, across from Speedway. Pirates supporting pirates. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. You've had your new computer a few years now, but lately it's been running super slow, acting strange, and you're worried about viruses and losing data. This is driving me mad! Let the experts at University PC Care in Greenville and New Bern professionally diagnose your Mac or PC to see what's really going on. They'll determine the root cause and not just symptoms, so you don't waste money fixing the wrong issues. Call 252-558-1280 for in-store or remote service, or make an appointment online at universitypccare.com. Do you ever talk to yourself about where to eat today and then you hear Warren's hot dogs. then you're thinking yeah two hot dogs chips and a drink for only 625 would be awesome Warren's hot dogs. and maybe some homemade lemonade perhaps a pizza or a sub and definitely an apple or peach turnover Warren's hot dogs. don't overthink where to eat today go to warren's hot dogs in greenville across from ron ayers or in chocolate next to the fire station warren's hot dogs serving the pirate nation since 1991 go pirates hi this is Morgan Aylers, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show. Taking your questions or comments on our Facebook live feed. Coach Harrell looked at my notes, and he saw 129.20. He was impressed. He thought I had this thing since 2020. I told him that's the day he was hired. That's why I put it over here. Remember that day? Oh, yeah. The day you were hired. Great I remember day. the first interview when uh, you came in town, and we had a chance to go one-on-one. Yeah. And it was uh, and a, and a friendship developed after that. We certainly appreciate all the times you've been on and, and everything you do for us. Uh, it's been a you. lot of fun with uh, East Carolina Pirate Football. I've been blessed for these 40 years. That I've had the radio show for about 34, 35 of them, and um, mainly we base it on assistant coaches coming on and doing <laughs> stuff, and it's, yeah. it's been great. I mean, I, they've had, nice. you know, you think back to some of the assistant coaches and through the years like mark rick was here yeah you know you think about uh several other others uh i can't the indianapolis colts coach uh pagano chuck pagano chuck, yeah. yeah he was here three different times wow he was like shankweiler you know, <laughs> like a vampire you could, couldn't kill him he kept yeah. coming back it's an awesome place and we certainly enjoyed it yeah and, you know it's been it's been a great home for us and shanks here so how about that yeah. so yeah he's still with the team he's got a different role but i think he enjoys it he does and, and you know he He'll pop in our defensive room sometimes, and and we talk a little ball, and and he, he's he's fun to have him around. Yeah, he is that. He's always been a, a good friend. And he uh, he called me about something the other day, and, it, and I think we're working on somebody's working on a project from the '99 team, so we're going to try to help him with that. But uh, it's hard to believe that uh, through all the years of, of pirate football and just uh, some of the great seasons that we've had, and '99 was uh, certainly one of them. Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator uh, at East Carolina. We've talked about this before. You started working with uh, Coach Houston. Lenore Ryan in the Citadel, but you knew Coach Houston 
long before that. Yeah, we were actually from the same hometown. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when I was a elementary school kid, the bus route, I think the first bus stop on the way home was his his house. And his mom was a babysitter and would jump, be like 10 kids get off. <laughs> and uh, that's that's how I first knew Coach Houston. Yeah, that's a, that's a long time ago. Did yeah. you ever think that you'd be working together for this many years, years later? Hey, I just thought if I was a high school coach and, uh, you know, I'd, I would be uh, – be happy and and the lord's blessed me and you know truly blessed to, to be where i am and, and be a place that football is so important and matters and people are passionate about it and you know that's a dream man yeah. just live every day i feel like hey i get to live the dream and, and that's what we talk about you know nobody obviously was excited about the two and ten year last year so many weird things happened you know i i tell people that hey if all the weird things turn into great things this year this team could win a lot of games right i and mean I, and, and football's like that and that's why everyone's so excited around around yeah. this program is just hey we were two and ten but we don't and even our players don't feel like we're far off yeah you know we feel like hey we make a few adjustments here and play a little better bam we can we can go be the you know opposite record you talked a little bit about what you see in this new pirate offense what have you seen with the quarterbacks because that's obviously on the minds of of, of everyone pirates you know have to have an upgrade at quarterback from a year ago and they've got two kids in there battling for that starting position but what do you see from those two guys they all challenge you i mean challenge you with with arm talent they challenge you you know just the way they operate the offense um and there there's there are two guys that you better game plan for you know, you can't just say, oh, we're not going to let the quarterback be no, because they will certainly beat you. Yeah. Does one of them have a certain strength that you've seen over the other one, or is it kind of just a neck-and-neck neck race? Or? They, they, they both make us look bad. So <laughs> That's not any fun now, is it? No. Uh, two excellent quarterback uh, possibilities for this East Carolina Pirate football team. When you, you think back to your defense and, and the players you have on that D, you have six players that start at least nine games. That experience is just it's vital for a great defense. Defense. Yeah, it is, and um, you know the, the guys that they, ha- they haven't started a bunch of games. We got to get them caught up. But anytime you got guys coming back, and, and you can talk about you know pre- previous games or what happened in this game or certain certain circumstances, they can pop right to it and recall that is always good. To, and they can help bring along the younger guys too. So they know the culture. You're, they know what the ex- expectations are. They know the standard. And they can get everybody else in line. And, you know, it's changed so much that, that transfers used to come in and, and the, the coaches would always say, well, it's going to take them a year to get acclimated. And sometimes yeah. we'll redshirt some of those transfers. That's not the case anymore, is it? When transfers come in, I mean, you're putting the pads on them and you're putting them somewhere and seeing where they can help. Yeah, and I think it's your job as a coach and a coaching staff is to make sure that you put them in a situation where they can play right away. If they're talented enough to play for you, you better make sure that you're keeping their job simple enough and – and their responsibility is simple enough that they can they can go play. So that's what we you know I think you'll see that more and more as the transfer portal continues to grow. You'll see coaches kind of hey we're going to make sure we kind of keep a base package so we can get these guys on the field right away. And, and when you're getting a transfer in, it's almost like if you get him in, get him playing but you want them to feel comfortable because the idea is to keep them. And right. the way the rules are now, you know, guys, and I, I've always, I always said, you, you know, if you get mad at practice one day and things don't go your way, some of these guys, you know, just pack their bag, take the ball and go home. And yeah. that's, that's, it's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah. And I think, you know, we, I think we talked about this in the fall. We, we try to build a culture and a, a defensive unit of, Hey, we care about each other. We love each other. We're playing for each other. It's all about, everybody and not just this guy or that guy or ain't about me and it's about what we can do for each other yeah one of us make a play all of us make a play and just doing that together so i think that helps that you talked about some of the defensive linemen before who are some of the the players somebody wrote in and said who are the dogs who are your dogs this year (laughs) but who are the guys you're really counting on yeah i I think those guys up front it starts with those guys deontay johnson elijah moore sue red where they played a lot of football cj elijah moore's had a year was it 21 maybe that he he, every time the ball was fumbled or something he fell on it yeah yeah. he was always around the football chad Chad stevens made a lot of plays for us last year jd lampley yeah um you know and, and we got a, I'm gonna have a new starter at outside backer in the boundary with that Sam Danko or Raheem Craig. Uh, you know, excited about both those guys. They they flashed in practice. We're gonna have a new Mike linebacker, whether it's uh, Day Day Wilson or Zakai Barker. Both those guys are doing a really good job. And excited about Zakai, and, and he's one of our hardest workers in our program. So, um, you know, I think those guys up front is kind of where it starts. Siobhan Revel, uh, you know, we got to make sure he, he gets back to who he can be and and covering out there and his safety. 
we've had some guys start some games. Jordan Huff, Devontae Nash, or Dontavious Nash, Omar Rogers. We just got to make sure they keep improving and, and, and they play at a high level and, and can complete us back there. You got a guy that I'm a big fan of watching play high school football for three years, Omar Lewis, and just yeah. what he did at Tarboro. Yeah. And uh, it just, he was such a leader. And everybody you talk to, the first thing they said, man, what a great kid. What a great, you know, great individual. And, and I'm sure he's an asset. He, he is. We have four, you know, early enrollees on right. the defense, two, two edge guys. And I, a uh, nickel and then omar lewis at, at safety and you know he's doing a really nice job back there and, you know he's kind of quiet and say much but he flies around and flashes and you certainly think he'll be a good player one. Now, that's what jeff crowdock at tarber would always say and say he don't say a whole lot mm-hmm. but but those guys know that he's, he leads in a different way yeah. and, and he's active I and mean, he's running the football so that's the most important part. Yeah, that is the most important part. Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator at East Carolina, live in our studio, taking your questions, comments on our Facebook live feed. When you get back to work coming up tomorrow on the practice field, what's the number one concern you want to work on or tweak or that kind of thing? Yeah, I think for us, it's just, um, you know, obviously we got our new install going in tomorrow. All right. We made some mistakes Saturday. We got to make sure we th- those cleaned up and we don't make those mistakes again. Um, so I think that's just continue to grow, continue to improve. You know, if we, if we don't get any better between now and September, we're in for another long season. So we got to make sure every single day we're finding ways to get better to, to help us next next fall. When, when you guys watch film together, is it, a, is it a situation you watch as position players first, then you get the defense together, then the whole team? Or yeah. how does how does that – Yeah, know, so go. just kind of the process there is after the scrimmage on Saturday, we get together as a defensive staff went through it critiqued it we talked about their expectations for each each position each young man what he was doing well what he wasn't doing well and really just a full full blown deep dive into it there uh, we watched it again this morning with coach houston as, as a defensive staff this afternoon we'll, we'll meet positionally so each each group will meet linebackers together corners together safeties together and go through it with a position coach and every single clip watching hey here's what you're doing really well here's what you got to do better and making sure they fully understand their, their job. And not only like the, the technique things, but also just, hey, what's the situation here? Is it fourth down? Is it third down? Hey, where, is, it, is it coming out, red zone, whatever it may be? So make sure we're doing a good job teaching that as well. And then tomorrow, before we go out to practice, we'll have a defensive unit meeting, caught side of the ball. And, and we'll, we'll point out some good things that we did on Saturday. We'll point out some bad things we did on Saturday. We'll obviously overemphasize the turnovers uh, if we have some of those. and and kind of go from there. Then once we do that, then we'll start on the install. Hey, here's a quick install, bang, 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 and then we'll go out to practice. Yeah, a lot goes into it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, And these guys are trying to get their grades, you know, good and staying <laughs> in school and all this. That's but right. they're learning all the time, aren't they? They are, and, and it's consistent what's, what's uh, required of those young men. You know, first it's a student, and they got to do, do a great job in the classroom. And I tell the guys this, like, it's hard to live, you know, at certain areas of your life if you don't hey, be a great student it's hard to be a great football player but if you're a great person you're a great student you know it all carries over and so i think you got to take care of all parts of your life when you're watching tape with, with your coaches mm-hmm. and somebody you know obviously a blown assignment or something does that coach kind of say, say you know that's my bad i had him in the wrong spot or or we talked about that and you know, he just doesn't get it yet or, no i think you know even as our players, we don't want them, hey, pointing to somebody on the field and saying, your fault, you gave up play. Right. We all pull the thumb. Right. Hey, what can I do better? We got we get beat on a deep ball. Hey, what can I do better to get a pass rush up front to help the corner out? Um, so we're all pulling the thumb. And that starts in our in our coaching staff. Hey, how can I do a better job of coaching, teaching, drilling to get that young man in a better position to make a play? Now, everybody always likes to hear about blitzes and blitz packages. When you think about the, your, the totality of the pirate defense, you know, is it a blitzing scheme? Is it a multiple scheme? You know, how would you describe it? Very aggressive. Yeah, we want to be multiple. We want to be flying around. You know, bringing different pressures or different looks and disguises. Um, but at the end of the day, our our players will tell you it's not what we do, but how we do it. Even though, yeah, we're going to pressure, we're going to get exotic looks, we're going to show you an overload front, bare front, six up front, predator package, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, we got to play physical, we got to play fast, we got to create turnovers. Man, there's nothing like a big old sack too. You know, yeah. you get in there and tackle that quarterback, maybe a you know sack fumble, that kind of thing. And I'm excited about those guys up front. I yeah. think as the season went last year, we started out slow with our sacks, but as the season went. 
you know, those guys picked that picked that up a little bit and some of those different things we were doing. And I think Raheem Craig is a guy that has been added to the mix that, that's going to increase those as well. And the more that you can pressure the quarterback with that front, you know, front three, front four, you know, the better things are. You don't have to bring anybody and that kind of thing. No doubt. When you get the quarterback with four, and it makes a lot of things easier. It makes my job easier for sure. Blake Harrell, defensive coordinator, our guest. We've got one more segment to go. We'll take our final commercial break. We'll come back. I promise we'll update the Sweet 16 contest and uh, wrap things up with Coach Harrell after this. It's bow time. <laughs> Chicken or biscuits? That's an impossible choice. How can you decide between Bojangles' perfectly crispy, boldly seasoned chicken or their fluffy, made-from-scratch buttermilk biscuits? Well, the good news is you don't have to. With a Cajun chicken filet biscuit, you get the best of both worlds. An all-white meat chicken breast marinated with a bold blend of seasonings and served up on a fluffy, golden buttermilk biscuit. When it comes to real-deal southern flavor, there's no reason you can't have it all. Order a Cajun chicken filet biscuit today. It's bow time. Hear that? That's the plumpest, juiciest hot dogs you've ever seen getting their grill on. But we both know what'll make it sound even better. Oh yeah, it's a Pepsi to go with your hot dog. Because when you're chomping on America's favorite meal, relish, mustard, and onions perfectly blending into a crescendo of flavor, there's only one thing that makes everything about that moment better. A cold, refreshing Pepsi. One mouth-watering sip is all it takes to make this whole experience go from pretty good to jaw-droppingly, table-poundingly incredible. Don't believe me? Just listen. See what I mean? It's like music to my ears. And if you'll excuse me, I have a date with the two most beautiful things I've ever seen or heard. Hot dogs. Better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Ah. This March, Moore's Barbecue has teamed up with Pepsi to bring you the ultimate combo experience, the Carolina Classic. Sink your teeth into our succulent dark chicken combo served with our signature barbecue. Two sides, piping hot hush puppies and a free ice cold Pepsi courtesy of Moore's Barbecue and Pepsi. There's a common misbelief today that to make it further, you need to push yourself, that you need to give up any joy to continue your rigid routine. Or you could try another way. Take some time to enjoy life, like having a Michelob Ultra with friends, because happiness is is essential to living an exceptional life. Michelob Ultra, a refreshing and balanced flavor with only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Michelob Ultra, proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Here at Papa John's, we know our stuff. So try our newest cheesy calzone epic stuffed crust pizza made with a blend of ricotta and mozzarella hand stuffed into that Papa John's fresh, never frozen original dough. Get it for a limited time only at Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Go Pirates. Big jobs on big properties demand a big side-by-side. A side-by-side like the first ever Honda Pioneer 1000 Deluxe Crew. This flagship model delivers serious power and performance where you need it most. Even more, it offers best-in-class comfort for six occupants with back seat leg room beyond compare as for build quality we'll let the honda name speak for itself head to ron airs motorsports and see the all-new pioneer 1000 deluxe crew today on approved credit see dealer for details pirate radio 1250 and 9 30 they'll never forget the eccentric pirate bonnet and his savage insane vengeful pirate horse he's a pirate a real proper pirate a proper pirate that man is a fearsome pirate if i ever seen one yep yeah he's definitely a pirate the voice of the pirate nation you're listening to the brian bailey show powered by greenville utilities working for our community not for shareholders now back to the show all right welcome back to our show we update the standings in the uh, second chance with the sweet 16 remember we've got that great cooler from our fine folks at carolina eagle uh the state of mind cooler with the pirates and the bud light logo and everything and uh and just some some great great prizes uh right now our friend brian north from wcti tv he's got three of the final four remember he's the only person that picked nc state in the final four and he picked them to win the whole thing so he's very much alive as far as that goes he's also got uconn and purdue in his uh, final four he, he took north carolina he's got nc state to beat north carolina in the championship game that won't happen obviously but he's got nc state so if nc state wins the whole thing it'll be brian north other than that everybody else is just getting most people got one or two right as far as the final four goes so have you had a chance to watch some of the uh the tournament coach i have we, we actually did a uh, a family 
family little terms. Oh, did you? Yeah, so my daughter actually got into it, and, you know, some of them picked, you know, hey, who, who was the higher seed, and that's who they went with, or who was the favorite color or mascot. So it's been it's been fun. The color and mascot seems to work better than yeah. actually if you, if you look at the uh, seeds and that kind of thing. All right, we got another question from uh, our Facebook Live feed. With so many new faces on offense, is Coach Houston making you play a lot of base D against them right now, or can you turn it up this spring? No, I, I think we've been able to do what we do. Um, you know, and I think they, they've attacked us. We've attacked them, and I think that's what makes you better. I think you have to go out there and um, play with the game you're going to play in the fall. But also, hey, how can we, you know, go get stops, or how can they go score touchdowns? And if we will both do that, then it's going to cause, you know, force each one to get, you know, play at a higher level and get better. Have you talked about the format for the spring game yet? We have not yet. Yeah, because that's always different. Now, sometimes, you know, the ones are going against ones, yeah. twos against twos. Yeah. Sometimes the players pick. Yeah, and some of that's based on, uh, you know, your depth at certain positions. Um, we've done, like, a defensive scoring system versus an offensive scoring system. We've, right, we've seen that before. Yeah, we, we've split teams, so... Uh, you know, coaches kind of bases that on situations, circumstances for year, year by year. What's the the kind of game that you like? You know, you with the defensive wins and doesn't give up any scores. <laughs> I know <laughs> a, a shutout. I'm sure all the fans would love that, right? <laughs> I tell you, hey, fans better love defensive football because you got to have that defense. No matter how many points you score, you got to stop the other team. And uh, Blake Harold and company have done a good job of that since Coach Harold got here for head coach Mike Houston. Uh, when you look back at the years you've been at East Carolina, any, anything that you think back on it hey wish i'd done this a little different or that a little different every night yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know i think that's your job as a coach you always go back and hey the one play last year that i go back to blah blah you know or the year before the year before, you know or if i made that call just a little bit differently how could we you know maybe pull that game out and play a little better or won the game whatever it may be so you know there's games from 2020 uh, 2021 you know that I always haunt you. You know, you, you, you seem to remember the bad, remember the bad plays more than the good plays. Um, but I think more than that, you remember the players and the relationships you have with those guys, Jaquan McMillan, you know, Hell Coach yeah. Bivens, whoever it may be. The double pass against Marshall last year. I remember Coach Houston coming over and said, "Man, we we talked about that. We we had you know we were yelling on the field. Watch this, watch that. And yeah. sometimes it just happens like it that. It just happens. And I think that's probably the one play that you know I go back to and like, hey, you know, there was actually a third down. Um, the series or second out of the series before the ball i just happened to see on the cut up the other day the quarterback fumbles the ball it bounces right back to oh yeah if it goes like two feet to right the left, i remember we that cover it right they never get in that situation and, and now all of a sudden we're up and they're you know now they can't be conservative back there they gotta sit back and drop back past it and you know it's funny how like one play you think can change your whole season the confidence you get going yeah um but that's how you think as a coach. Yep. That's how, I think that's how we all think in life sometimes, too. You know, there's, there's no doubt. There's decisions that we make every day in life that we think, you know, maybe I should have done this a little different or that a little different. Raising kids is just like the same thing. There's I mean, no doubt. It's just uh, it's just something uh, when you look at everything like that. We're going to have more spring football coverage for you coming up next week. We're trying to get Coach Houston in here either before the spring game or after the spring game. But uh, that'll be a lot of fun when we talk spring football there. So I hope the rest of your spring goes well, Coach. I certainly yeah. enjoyed you coming on today. We're, we're certainly excited about it i mean it's been a you know the last two weeks i've seen a lot of growth from our young men i've seen a lot to be excited about for pirate nation and our football program you know really want to make a, a jump this week and and then moving in toward the, to the spring game and you know encourage our fans to come out and check it out i think it'll be exciting for them and you get a chance to take a look, look at the you know the new look pirates yeah. pirates and and see some new guys and new faces out there and and uh, I think that's going to roll right into the to the baseball in the afternoon, and you got a bunch of events around it, so it should be a great day for. It should be an awesome day. The pigskin pig out party and all yeah. the barbecue. You get a chance ever to get any some of that barbecue? Oh yeah, yeah, always. Yeah, that's good stuff too. Coach Harold, Blake Harold, the defensive coordinator of East Carolina, our guest. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Certainly appreciate it. We'll get you back on here hopefully in August or so. How about that? That'd be awesome, Brian. Appreciate right, very you. Great, Blake Harold joining us today. That is our show. Have yourself a great sports week. Next week we will have the winner for our second chance. Well, we may not though because they play. Monday night for the national championship. We'll update the standings in the second chance for the Sweet 16, and we will have more on spring football at East Carolina. Have yourself a great sports week. We'll see you back here next week on The Brian Bailey Show. This has been The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, Taft Taft and Hagler, tiebreakers and Greenville Auto World.
Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show, right here on Pirate Radio. This is Pirate Radio.